Hello, Tons here. My name is Tons Gauntlet. I'm from 24hourflamenco.com. You can go there and contact me about original art and, and also hiring me for music if you're in my area. And, and so I want to thank all my new subscribers. I'm really happy that I continue to, to get uh, new subscribers uh, bit by bit. Inch by inch, we gonna make this garden grow, right? And so uh, that's a positive thing. I think that I, I hope all my subscribers can can share it with with two more people. That each one of my subscribers could could get, get me two new subscribers. I think that's what a lot of my work is worth. Like listen to a lot of my songs. You'll have you might agree. Go and check them out. And that I've like got so many excellent songs that it's like it's good to subscribe so you can have time to be at your leisure to come back and sift through my videos at your leisure and because it's can it can be hard and I've got a lot of great videos out there that are lined up that I'm waiting to be published and I and I can only publish one a week because of uh, YouTube restrictions upon my channel and so. Um, uh, yeah, so so I'm really excited to be sharing uh, all of my work with you. I am an, a, a painter also. My paintings are, each of them are flamenco songs in the series that I've been working on in, for years. It's a series of flamenco paintings with uh, freehand uh, uh, meditation uh, line drawings with, the, the, with watercolor and layers. And all of these have a, a particular tone and theme uh, that just like every song within flamenco and especially a rhythm. I work through and carve through a, a particular rhythm with each one that I, that I want so that there's a coherency and a consistency, a mandala-like consistency that is uh, true and, and uh, speaks. And that's my aim in and art and many studies that I've come up with that are that are just trash heap because they're studies, but uh, I have many other ones which are just gems and that are for sale. And so I do I do art sales. I can show you on a podcast if you're interested. Let me know and contact me through my website. That would be great. And otherwise, it would be great if. Every each one of my subscribers, my new subscribers, if you could get me, if you could recommend me and and help me to connect with two more subscribers that you know, that might be hard, that might be easy. Uh, I don't know. I I hope it's not too hard uh, because uh, I think my I think my work merits that and warrants that. And I've got a lot of exciting stuff too. I've got more than music. I've got some of the best poetry in the English language to read for you and in, 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 in my, according to my own inspiration, of course, like where I found some of the best inspiration, I'm going to share you some unexpected poetry that you've, you've probably never heard of before. And, uh, and then, uh, I've, I've got podcasts about, uh, talking about, inspirational books like some of the most inspirational books in in the world and podcasts talking about creativity and spirituality um i want to have some more game game like kind of funny uh humor centered podcasts and i can do that because i am a funny guy i'm just uh so far the the camera i have a lot to say and so i i don't i don't joke enough on camera basically because uh because i'm i've got i've got a passion to speak that's the thing so i uh, but i have i have humor podcasts and so i'm i'm going to do that i i like i i do have one out there that's a a, a humor like a joke i tell a joke and then i i'm going to do some more of those because i've got some pretty funny jokes and i can even improv a little bit um <laughs> some of the time but usually i try to just throw those in into the talk and you know th throw jokes in here and there but most people who know me know me as a pretty funny guy most like i you know say that i'm hilarious actually that you know people who know me it's just 
it, it's a matter of the heart and coming to be at ease with people and speaking at ease. And then you end up like, like saying things that are just like, you know, pretzels of humor that make, make everybody just crack up or make somebody laugh. And that's, that's the idea. So inspiration here. We're talking about inspiration. Let's stay inspired, please. Give me your comments. I want to hear, hear what you think, uh, and, and uh, about all of this. Uh, and so let me know. <laughs> let me know. This is these broad subjects here talking about art and, uh, creativity and spirituality. That's the, the, the essential theme of my, my channel here. It's the, the alchemy of creativity and spirituality because within all religions, within all religions, you have a, a common core and you can, they can quibble on, on the periphery uh, over all sorts of issues, but that, that just shows like limit of mind and incapacity to uh, 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 entertain uh, two contrary positions at the same time. For instance, monotheism and polytheism. It's like, I can do both. Both, both can be correct at the, at the same time. So, you know, it's just a matter of lens and, and perspective. And so th these are what great, in these are how great intellects think, by the way. Let me tell you, this is the way great intellects think. Not the limited intellects who get caught up in, in little fights and quibbles and saying which which way is the the expressly proper way to uh, paraphrase to you know say something about something divine, right? I mean, come on, it's like you can't limit the you can't limit. It's like your your words are never going to come close. So um, that's why we we take uh, refuge in in creativity for spirituality because it's within art and music that that the divine is truly expressed much much greater than just in in simple words and so these are connected spirituality and meditation and 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 creativity they're all so much they're, they're so much more fundamentally linked and and so um, definitely my my art is linked. Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm painting a picture of a cross. It's like, well, you can you can't see you can see a cross in there though, or some of my paintings you might be able to. It's like the the I'm not like you don't have to see the the the, the obsession for pictorial uh, photograph photographic representation of things is a that's what like I was saying earlier. It's a uh, it's an asphyxiation of of the, the mind. It's an as asphyxiation of the aesthetic eye to become only interested in in the, the like it's, it's the eye. The camera is the only eye. It's that idea. It's not true. It's not true at all. The part of the eye is the heart, and the the, the eye needs the heart to see and interpret, and that's like half of the eye itself. You know. It's not just like the eye and the, the photographic eye. It's just like you can't argue against that. Of course, you know the eye. The eye is so much more. You see, that's why a photographic image of, of things doesn't just it doesn't do it for me as much. It's beautiful as it is, and if even if I like it, it's just not going to be as great for me as something that's um, that is also seeing with the heart that portrays something with the fingers that that expresses sublime truths of the heart. And personally, I don't think the Mona Lisa does, you know? I think the Mona Lisa is way overrated. Da Vinci was great as an architect. You should think probably his greatest work was as an architect, but, you know, and he was a great painter and they were great sculptures, but Donatello was the the better sculptus, sculptor. And it's like the, so um, Da Vinci, his library, you know, his architecture, that's, that was the apotheosis of Da Vinci, not, not that painting of that woman. You know, it's, I can assure you, he, he, he himself would not even probably, if you could have spoken to him and asked his opinion, would have said it's one of, one of his, his lesser works. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I saw it, I saw it, 
I saw it live, but it was, uh, you never even know, right? Like, it, was it that live or did they really have it in, in the basement locked up and they were showing you a thing? I don't know. Well, forget it. It's not even that interesting of a painting to, to talk about. It's really not that interesting of a painting. So pictorial representation, it's, it's just, it's like rock music. It's just way, it's just, it's a done deal. It's done. It's overdone. It's been worn out, and 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 that's that. That's why it takes someone who I respect, like Picasso, to 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 to. See, you have to see with the heart and and paint paint with the knowledge that you see with the heart, and that you're brave enough to express that, in spite of what everybody else says that 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 about the eye. That the eye has to be a certain way. You're wrong. You're wrong. You see with the heart, and when they paint with the heart. And you see, then you know, and you go, ah, yes, the heart, the heart understands. So that's what great art is for. It's for the heart. It's not for the eye. It's not for prints. It's not for making a print of a great painting. It's, it's better to have original work on your wall. Even original bad work is better than prints of good, good art. Because, like, uh, at least bad art it will be original. There'll be layers and you can, you can live through it and live around it and then finally put it in the basement if it's that bad. Otherwise, you can give it away and let other people like live around it. And then other, or you might discover that it's good one day. You might like realize that this is like a, a work of genius that you, you just thought was a, a, a bad work that you got at, at a garage sale or something, you know, or at, at Goodwill. Usually they buy the art at Goodwill. I mean, it's original. I, you know, it's like, it's still, there's studies. These are studies. And you know, people can't tell the difference between their studies and the original. And so I guess that artist can, who, who gives their studies to Goodwill, right? Like, that's a good thing to do with your studies. That's what I might do. Just give this original art to, like, give it to Goodwill. I don't think I would do that at all. I don't want it to be seen. That's the whole point. I'm going to have to like, I'm going to have to destroy it. A lot of the studies that I've done. And so, um, so that it doesn't get mixed in and, and clog up, clog up the rainbow of all of my good work. That's literally what, what I'm up against. Every artist is up against that. So thanks again for subscribing. And, uh, I'm happy, glad to be able to introduce myself to you, uh, explain a little bit more what I am, who I am, and what I'm up to. And I hope to hear back from, from a whole bunch of you in the comments box or in emails and, and whatnot. Peace.